What up, everybody? Hey, it's the Sports Census Podcast coming to you. Coming to you every week live and direct. This is the Sports Podcast where we give you sports with no hot takes, no mess when it comes to sports. It's the Sports Census Podcast. It is currently 8.01 out here in the East, 7.01 out for the Central Time, 6.01 out there for the Mountain Time folks, and... 501 out there for my West Coast folks. It's the Sports Chasers Podcast. And this week, hey, we'll be diving in. We'll be talking about the NFL preseason is in full swing. Week three of uh, the NFL preseason, we'll talk about some of the camp stories going out. Uh, Rookie quarterbacks to play or not to play. We'll talk about the MLB Power 20 ranking. The Yankees have won 11 in a row as of tonight. The Orioles have lost 19 in a row. I think they won last night. What's going on in baseball? Uh, we'll also talk about college football. Uh, this weekend is the first of uh, the college football season starting. You got Hawaii versus UCLA. We'll also talk about the alliance between the ACC, Big Ten, Big 12, and the SEC is trying to pick up the Pac-12. Also, we'll talk about the NBA news. Uh, we'll do a little track and field also. With that said, going from my left to right, We'll introduce the crew. D Dub, what's up? What's up, sports chasers of family? What's going on, man? Yo, man, you gotta believe in something, man. You gotta believe in something. Gotta believe, gotta believe. Thanks, D Dub, for checking in. Next on the list is the angry one, number one, James Eric. Sports chasers family, what's really good with y'all, man? How y'all living, man? Let's get haze. Hey man, let's get it in. Let's get it in. Oh, uh, DA will be with us very shortly. Mike Mills will not be joining us tonight. He'll join us next week. Um, but we're gonna cut right into the chase, man. Man, it's good to be here, man. It's uh, you know, another week we didn't do last yeah. week because I was traveling, things of that nature. Celebrating my birthday, man, and um, just glad to be here for another year, man. I'm. Really thankful to the good Lord for that. Thanks for all the birthday shout outs, you know, that those that gave me. I'm very appreciative to every in each and every one of you guys that did that, man. But enough about me. We'll go. D Dub, what's up, man? What's going on tonight, man? Yo, man, nothing, man. The Yankees is smoking. <laughs> smoking and sipping. They they are on <laughs> sipping, smoking and on sipping. Fire. Eleven in a row, man. Eleven in a row. You know they, what I'm saying? We they we said for them to sell, sell. I'm I did, I did, but they, I hey, they proved they, they, they made a couple of changes. Hey, what do I know, man? I'm just, I just talk it, man. You know what I'm saying? They live it, and they are doing their thing. They added two, couple of bats. I thought they needed more pitching, but we'll see, man. I don't know if it's again. It's a marathon. We'll see if it takes them over the top. Yeah, I know. don't mean nothing. It's good. I'm, you know, I'm appreciative, but uh, you know how that goes. Uh, you still got a, it's a long way still. Oh yeah, well, the, the long, well, not really long, but you, you know, yeah, you you it had it. Number first is upon us next week, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, round you, in the corner you're here, you round yeah. almost, almost round in third, just about. So, so we'll uh, see, we'll see what's up, James Eric. Hey, everyone, what's up, brother? What you, what's going on? What's tonight? going on with you, man? Chilling, chilling. My white socks, man. We've been stumbling a little bit, but we ain't fumbling, baby. We still in first place. We still grinding. So we 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 gonna see what it is, man. Yeah, the Yankees. I'm, I'm gonna say too. Uh, I was. I'm. I'm really surprised. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm really surprised, but I'm also uh, um, thankful that the Yankees don't got back into this race, man. Um, the more the merrier. Uh, unlike the Baltimore Orioles, we'll, we'll talk about that later on. But uh, yeah, man, you you got you got some guys. It's just like in all sports, we always talk about it. You got some guys that know what they're doing, know how to run an organization. They know how to. Uh, get the pulse of a team and some guys don't so I mean like you said it's, it's a marathon it's not a sprint so we'll see if they can make it cross the finish line into the playoffs and see what they do from there yeah it's going to be um, very important to see what they do um, some notable things uh, we're going to go with the um, check out the um, the power rankings here as we look like we just talked about D-Dub just stepped into baseball Oh, I'm sorry, brother, but you know, yeah, nah, nah, nah. you know, yeah, you know, we're, we're flexible on this show, man. We're flex, flexible. we're flexible, man. So you know, oh, uh, with that said, the Giants keep on plucking mm. them up. 
Um, the Giants are 82 and 44. They last, you know, they just keep winning, man. And they just, just keep winning. And their acquisitions, man, have made it even more of a chance of them, you know, just doing it again with um, Brandon Belt and, and, and Buster Posey coming back off injury for over a year and change. And he's coming back and doing this thing, man. So the Giants are number one, the LA Dodgers, um, 80 and 47. Hey, if you watch baseball, you got to watch the Dodgers and Padre Series, man. If anybody saw that catch that um, AJ Pollock, AJ, he was, he went, I thought well, Machado thought that the thing was going, <laughs> not. <laughs> and, it, and it wasn't no little, no little cheap thing either. His arm was over the fence. Though. Oh, it, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rob Manny Machado, yep. go yeah. ahead, home run, man, on Tuesday night. So, you know. In San Diego, so hey, um, uh, that series right there is going to be something else. If they if again, you know, somebody, somebody is going to win 105 games, man, and possibly not. You know, they'll get into the to the plan, but they might not make it into the regular. It's just what it is, man. Yeah, it's, I mean, it happens at times, man. You know, like you, like you, it could go the other way. You know, uh, lesser team, <laughs> lesser charged teams. It could go the other way, man. So you know, and they end yeah. up, you know, somebody um, with a bad record gets in. So you know, um, number three is the Tampa Bay Rays. Just keep on doing it, man. Um, Nelson Cruz, a designated hitter, he he keeps on um, hitting them. He currently has um, I'm sorry about that. I was saying that, but um. So this, this guy is man. He's bet. He's two seventy five, twenty six home runs, 70, 70 RBIs. Thank you, D Dub, for the pickup. Yeah. That's that's good. Well, the Rays keep doing it again, man. They just yeah. continue to win, and it's a shame that nobody, and I can say that, nobody goes out there and supports the Rays like they should. And and, and let me say, let me just say this: the Tampa Bay area is an. I I, I mean, I've been around in the area. It's a nice area, I think. So I don't know why they don't have enough people coming from all over to support that ball club and I think support the that team. Bad out there. I think there's a bad ballpark. If that's possibly, yeah. That's bad ballpark. Well, I, I think they should just go ahead and uh, and, and move their AAA team out of Durham and, and, and move a major league team to North Carolina. Man, I think it's time. Hmm. Or oh, they can keep the, them in Durham and move them to Charlotte. Yeah, North Carolina. I mean, yeah, either or. Because uh, well, baseball been, does well in, in, in North Carolina. I've been saying Believe baseball should have been in North Carolina for a while. I think they have enough to support it, you know what I'm saying, from all over. I believe that the uh, Major League Baseball cause, um, in Charlotte can support 81 home games, um, especially with transplanted folks from up north, mm -hmm. down in Florida. I, be I believe it would do well. This yeah. is a trans it's a transplant city, for one, That's so they will, get, they will get people – to come to the ballpark. Oh, are you that. trying to get the Tampa Bay Devil Rays to move? Uh, I'm not trying to get nobody. Yo, basically baseball is going to do what they do. So again, mm -hmm. I'm just giving them a suggestion like everybody else has an opinion and and uh, give out their suggestions on what they would like to see happen. And I would like to see that happen for uh, this uh, Charlotte market, this North Carolina market, because uh, I think they, they can handle it. They can, they well deserve it. They, they, they support the Panthers. They got you got North Carolina, you got South Carolina, and from every other city, you got Atlanta that would travel up. You got people from uh, Florida that would travel up Georgia. So I mean, you know, I think they, it can handle it. Yeah. Instead of me going three hours to uh, <laughs> Atlanta, I definitely all, all five Virginia, hours. Tennessee. You got a you got a whole bunch of neighboring uh, town. I mean, uh, states Absolutely. around here. So. And people want to see their teams. They may not be a fan of the whatever team they might be here in the Carolinas, but they will come to support um, other teams or see other teams, which means they will buy tickets for that the team here. So, anyway, yep. let me move right on. So, Tampa Bay's third in the Power of Twenty rankings. You got the Milwaukee Brewers who are seven, eight, and forty-nine. They just keep on doing the two. Shout out to the Brewers, um, the Yankees, who we. D. Dub Alpha mentioned the Yankees on the current eight, uh, eleven game winning streak, and Glaber Torres, he's he's up there. You know, I know I I have personally so joked about Torres, but he is absolutely 
hitting the ball. He really is. Well, shout out to the Yankees too, man, because they, they moved up from nine to five in this power rankings this week. Yep. So, uh, so they they've been playing excellent ball. Uh, so, you know, kudos to them. Well, we'll talk. Uh, so we got the Yankees at five. We got the Houston Astros at seventy-five and fifty-two. They was they were down from four to six of this week. The uh, Eric's um, White Sox are currently six with seventy-three and fifty-five. They've been kind of uh, stumbling in the last couple of years, but um, uh, it says here they've just they've gone twenty-one and twenty-six, and I mean that they play the fewest games against teams at five hundred better, forty-seven worse than worse. They've gone just twenty-one and twenty-six, twenty-six in those games. So I guess the White Sox got to get on their game. The Atlanta Braves have absolutely. Moved up. Um, they, they, the Yankees actually snapped their their nine game winning streak the other night, but uh, Atlanta's the best in the National League East. You got the Boston Red Sox at seventy two and fifty six. Uh, the o- Oakland Athletics, who the Yankees face tonight, um, again Oakland and Tampa Bay. Those are two organizations continue to knock it out the park. I don't know how they do it financially wise, but I, it's got to be the scouting. What's your thoughts on the Oakland A's? Yo, every year in the Oakland A's and, and Tampa Bay, you know, they find a way how to get it slipping into these playoffs and cause havoc for the other teams that people want to see make it. And they end up, you know, just throwing some, a wrench into the, um, a monkey wrench into things. So, you know, I, yeah, I, I agree with you on that one. It's definitely the scouting. I mean, they tend they keep finding these guys, and um, they 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 got excellent scouting on both on both sides, and find um pretty good talent. So kudos to them. I'm 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 glad you touched on this, and I'm sure this is going to segue into something else uh, that the moderator may bring up in this uh, MLB uh, segment here. But um, it's kudos to the Tampa Bay Rays. I pulled up the uh 2021 Major League um payrolls Mm. the first place tampa bay rays have a payroll of 43.7 million dollars wow you know who's right underneath them okay yes the inept baltimore orioles at 42.7 what a difference what a difference oh yeah a million dollars made go ahead kevin you know, I gave you other notes a couple of days before, you know, what we're going to talk about. And I absolutely was going to focus on the Baltimore Orioles. And I they did. got nice colors, though. Yeah, that black and orange, you know, they and white, you know, they do anything. Why are they? And so I put in, in my notes for everybody, for the guys. We do, we do our show. We I usually send out some things called show notes. Guys read notes. They can add to, you know, if you want to talk about this, talk about that, you know, kind of collaborate on that. And in my notes, I I talked about the Oakland, I mean, excuse me, the Baltimore Orioles. Yo, how do we just spend no money and I, how is this acceptable? But what do we say on this show? Vote with your dollars. Vote with your dollars. Stop going. Stop going. And because it's clear that the owners or the owner doesn't care. He that he care he cares the fans care more than this owner. He just cares to get a profit. He just wanted he just either want to break even or gain a profit. Yep. So he doesn't care one way or another. As long as the money's still rolling. You understand? Eric, so Eric, you're shaking your head. Um no, oh, because I feel like and I mean I'm not disagreeing, but it, it, it's crazy how you have one owner that whose roster is a million dollars less than another one's in the same division. And Tampa Bay is 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 running things like they're the New York Yankees and their payroll. And the Yankees are actually sucking in payroll, by the way, at uh, 179 million, but we're not even gonna get into all of that. My thing is this, man. Goes back to scouting. Vote with your dollars. Um, you, you gotta spend your money wisely, man. Um, and and I know DF, DA was here, your know, owner's own, players play, Manage is manage. I, I get all that, but this is what happens when you create um you create a locker room where 
um, there's nothing but incompetence going on. And I'm not just trying to say that these ball players are trash or anything like that. What I'm saying is obviously the essence of baseball has been lost in the Baltimore Orioles. It has been for some time now because they have been cellar dwellers for a very long time in that division, in the American League. So how do we fix it? Oh, first thing people say, well, well, hey, you got to open up your 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 bank account, right? Well, well, Tampa Bay ain't opening up no bank account. They in first place. Yeah. So you like I always say, man, regardless of whatever sport it is, you got to have the people in place with the right vision to get guys in line. You got to have your star players buy your best players. They have to buy into what is what the vision is, and you go down the pecking. It's a it's a pecking order, but it starts at the top. What did I say earlier? You got to believe in something. And you got to believe in something. You guys get in here and not, you know, you got to buy into the program, man, because, you know, again, you know, we talk about all, you know, all these players, but it, it, I mean, it goes down to scouting, like we said um, earlier. But, you know, these guys, um, this is, it's bad down there on, in Baltimore. I mean, they've been winless since what it was August 23rd, is winless in their last 18 games. They had the sixth longest MLB losing streak of all time. And the longest since 2005. Mm-hmm. That's how bad the Orioles have been. Yeah, I think they do. Uh, have they won 40 games yet? No. Uh, Check that for me real quick. Yeah, they actually they won 40 last night. They're 40 no, and last 86. night. <laughs> this is this is August it's 20. Three, yeah, 26. <laughs> three days ago. They 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 wasn't even they didn't even crack forty. I mean, you know, come on. I mean, this is this is pretty bad. They've it's given up. Bad. Oh. They've given up a total of seven hundred and forty runs. So this is so you you think about it. This is not like uh you know uh you know when you go to the draft for like in basketball and football. You know you got a draft pick and you know you might have that guy to turn around. Yo, the Orioles uh, if they don't spin if they don't have nobody on that roster they have to look into free agents and if they're not gonna spend no money they and they're gonna continue unless guys get better oh well well, here's the problem here's here's one problem i'm sorry kev here's one problem well you you had a talented guy manny machado and obviously he 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 didn't want to be there so So it's either it's either the culture or how did how they how they run this stuff that too well, I because, mean, that's part of the coaching. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you. I mean, this is this is pretty pathetic. Okay, what's your take? No, I was going to say the Baltimore Orioles definitely have a culture problem. They have for the last, I would say, within the last decade or so. Um, I don't think they're committed to winning. Um, I don't believe they're committed to winning. So. Do what they do. Uh, DA has joined us, um, and I'm glad he came in right on time. Uh, and I was going to talk about the teams like the Orioles, um, the Marlins. Maybe I'm giving them pass because Derek Jeter is still on, uh, out there or whatever. Um, hell, the Cleveland Indians are at 500 as we speak, and they have the worst. Uh, they they have spent the less at twenty three point five million. So, DA, yeah, um, go I, ahead, I think, go ahead, DA. My, my thing is this, brothers. Uh, we're we're at a point in time, right? So, right when we were younger, we we our beloved Yankees spent the money for good or for bad. They spent it. Sometimes it worked out, and sometimes it did not. But over the last few years, we're talking about teams that have not spent money. You know, you had the bill the uh. uh Bean ball out there in, in, in Oakland, you know, uh, Houston was great team. They were never top 10 in spending, you know, I'm not sure in baseball that works as much as it used to. I think a lot of it has to do with how good your scouting department is. Definitely. How, how real they are because right. dude, you can win without man. Like people think that the Dodgers like spent all, yo, know, Bellinger's one of theirs. You know, actually, Bellinger was supposed to be there with Puig. Like, they had all that stuff in house, man. They actually picked up two or three guys, you know? Mm-hmm. So, if you look at teams realistically, I, every year we always joke about the Cardinals. 
somewhere out of nowhere, they get three left-handed pitchers in September. You're like, who, what the, who, who are they? They're <laughs> from the farm. They're, on, they're from a AAA affiliate, and they get it in. You know, teams like the Orioles, listen, relegation, man, right? Got to so, go. So, so D, let me. you down to AAA, <laughs> and we're bringing up a, a AAA team to play in your stadium and make your money because you and your ownership do not care about winning. You got to go. So, so, so DA absolutely read the show notes and, and, and I put in there <laughs> the regulation, man, of how soccer teams across the pond, across in Europe and things of that nature. I buy. <laughs> oh, if you don't perform at a certain level, you will be derelegated to another division. And yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Explain that to us, how that works in soccer. So it, in baseball, it would be, all right, so in Charlotte, the affiliate of the uh, uh, White Sox plays in Charlotte. Yep. Let's just say, for example, say that they were the best team in AAA for the last five years. Right? So we've given you a chance, uh, Orioles. Right? But for five years, the Orioles have been straight hot garbage. Right. Only, the Orioles owners still get to sit around and make money because people come into the stadium. They're buying Franks and beers. So the Orioles owners still get to make money without making the investment into the team. So you know what? Uh, uh, James E. Warren and Dow Warren own the team in Charlotte. They play there in bb and Stadium in the middle of Charlotte. AAA, they've been the best team in AAA for the last five years. You know what, fellas? We are bringing you and your team to Baltimore. <laughs> And this is where you'll be until the Orioles prove that they deserve to be up here. Wow. And if it uh, gets wild enough, we'll get a we'll give you, we'll make another team for the league. Yo, but that why, would be I something else. else. <laughs> but but DA it won't that, happen because this this happens in Europe with these with the Premier League. Am I yes, correct? Yes, yes, yes. But wow. here we're the cap, we're really capitalists here, right? Right. So the owners, because Kevin Warren is the owner of the Orioles. And he's walking around like the dude from uh, Monopoly with the big hat on, like eh, 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 eh. just getting money, and no one cares. Get new players. I'm gonna sign Lou Brock. You know, when they are showing you by losing 18 games in a row or whatever they just did. Come on, man, that's not baseball. They just won their 40th game on August 25th. So what we're saying is, <laughs> what we're saying is. Those owners don't care. And I know folks were mad at dude from the Mets because he called out his team. He's like, yo, I've never seen hitting like this. <laughs> right? But at least it shows you got an owner that cares. What what they say? Where's the oh, lie, though? No, but so what's his name? Steve Phillips, I believe, uh, the owner of the Mets. Um, hedge fund guy. Hedge fund guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So he's used to what? Results. Mm -hmm. Winning. I didn't buy the team to lose. No. Right? So when you have that level between, you know, Daryl and James are the owners, and then they got Mikey, who's the GM, and they hired Buck Showalter as the, you know, AAA affiliated coach. Mm -hmm. Right? Your expectation is that Mikey gets the players and, and, and Bud goes ahead and coaches them up and gets them right. Correct. That's your expectation. And if that's not happening... Somebody has to go because everywhere that we work, <coughs> if you didn't perform at your job, you get fired. Speak on it. That's right. So the American public, as goofy as they are, they let this slide. They and it could be because they don't do what they don't vote with their dollars either. Exactly. They you to go to Camden Yards. Oh, I'm going to Camden Yards. It's a uh, uh, Dan Patrick. Uh, to the yards we go. Yeah, so it's a trip for me and the kids. Yeah, guess what, man? Don't don't, don't give guys any money. They, they, don't, they don't realize what they're doing, right? It's like we talk about in basketball, right? Dog, you, you drive from whatever the heck in Ohio to Cleveland to see a game. You know, it's the Lakers versus you know Cleveland. But you figure the Lakers, you know, the better team. Cleveland's not that good, but you get there and you know Westbrook, LeBron. Mellow, they all in suits, real nice suits, but they ain't sweatsuits. 
They are in suits sitting on the side, B. Plain clothes, man. Street clothes. So you watch your Anthony, you watch your Anthony Davis against shout out to Cleveland. Charles Barkley street club. Yeah, you, you, you know. Hey, and and we talked about this before. If the NBA, I know we're kind of switching up. The NBA had a disabled list that would cut a lot of that stuff oh, out. Yeah. But the thing that I was saying with the NBA, where it would be cool is because they have a G League team affiliate for every pro team. So it's easy. Yo, listen, the Knicks, you're going down. The Rochester Redbirds, you're coming up. Or why don't we send some of the pros that we pay a bunch of money to? Embarrass them. Yo, you're going down to AAA. We, we send you to the G League because you're playing like hot garbage. And we pay but, you $10 million a year. Well, here, here, here we go again, D. From what I said, and you know I, I've been a proponent of this. You know, and I know it's not going to change, but that, that guarantee money. I guarantee, I guarantee you if that stuff was like how it was, how it is in football where you're playing for something, because once you, you got the bag and secure the bag, most people are not going to go the extra mile no more. They done secure the bag. It's only a handful of people who continues that work. I agree, but you know, it's nothing you can do. I know, you, it, I, know base, I say it. Them, them in baseball got that guaranteed money. And I believe it hurts both sports, believe it or not. I do believe it hurts both sports. Which is why, why is football, why does football thrive? Why do people connect with well, football? It's because of, it's, the dog is that, it's two things. One, people like to see gladiators do what they do. Right. And football plays with gladiators. And two, there is something relatable to a guy that can lose his job because he's not doing his job well. Because mm. we all go through that. Yep, regular people, every day. Right, and I'm not going to get on it because this, this is Kev Man from Florida playing out there. Yo, know, Udonis Haslam has been on the team <laughs> four thousand years though, because he's a good locker room guy. And I think at the minimum, for his years, he's probably getting ten million a year to be a good locker room guy. Why don't he just make him a coach, hey, Kev? I would curse now. Okay, but you told me I'm not. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but I would be a blankety blank locker room guy for half that money. <laughs> but I'd be giving out waters and orange slices and, I get it. and, and stuff. I get it. Yo, come on, man. Come on. Yeah, come on. Be, That's let me let be me a locker room guy, like you just said. Won't you just be let me let me uh, let me round this, let okay, me okay. Round and, and, and go back to the to the present baseball thing and ask this question. Do you think baseball teams tank? We'll start yes. with yeah, they, yes. Go ahead, DA. Go ahead. Yes, they do. You can tell they do. When they start to sit down their rotation, and now you got Jimmy from 143rd Street pitching. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like summertime, and you're like, what the, it's August. Wait, who is this dude smoking cigarettes on the mound? <laughs> hey, hey, yo, my name's Jimmy. I used to play street ball back in the days. 143 and what? 8th uh, Avenue. We, we, we used to do that day playing stickball. And, yo, I'm nice with mine. And, yo, now listen, stickball. We, we I'm nice it. with mine. <laughs> yeah, we, we bounce it first, son. But hold on. <laughs> hey. hey. <laughs> All right, yeah. So I'm saying, what, where, where we at, son? Where the baseball? Uh, you, got, you got Danny Almonte. Uh, you didn't yeah. know his name. Yeah, he, he's 65, yeah. though. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. His birth, mm -hmm. his birth certificate, all wrong. But you hey. know, my my man. From <laughs> I couldn't think of his name the other day. I had to look it up, man. Danny Almonte. Shout <laughs> out to wherever you are. So, uh, D, so I, I uh, asked this. Point third. He's looking for a sponge ball with a box on yeah. the wall. When the catcher get there, like, hey, hey, what you doing there? Get the spray can and put the box on the thing. <laughs> yeah. Right. I don't need you catching it. It'll come back. It'll come back once I throw it on the box. That's right. That's right. Honey, we need a catcher. Anyway. Don't need no catcher, man. No, no catcher. No catcher. Uh, third, baby. No, we do. No, no catcher. It's what we do. So, but yeah, the reality is you can tell because they stopped playing dudes. And that's probably part of what D says with that guaranteed money. You don't want to get hurt. You don't want your dudes that you're paying a billion dollars to to get hurt. It's the end of the season. You got no chance to even get a wild card. Right. Uh, you're like, ah, sit them down. 
We're chilling. Well, you know what then? Let's bring the young kids up and send your whole team down. You can still chill. You wasn't gonna play your starters anyway. You you wasn't, you you wasn't on for the first part of the question when I asked, um, and I'm probably asking my own question. How does Tampa Bay and Oakland continue to do it, in your opinion? They have a different mindset, and they have scouts. Well, Dude, four, it's old school. They both have forty. Am I correct? Who brought up the um? Eric, Eric said that they both have $40 million payrolls. Compare that to the Yankees who have $170 million payroll. Yes, listen. How do they continue to do that, DA? It's the same way people do in their houses, man. Mm, facts. Right? So you, you get home and some people- Budget. Got, yes, they got everything they need as far as food is concerned in their house. Bills are paid. They're fine. They don't waste money going to Red Robin all the time or getting pizza all the time and, you know, there are small things that we all, in reality, could cut out of their, right. our, our lives that will, from a financial perspective, keep you straight. Right. So it's, it's not, it is not hard if you have scouting and you really care about your, and Kevin, me and you talked about this, every baseball team has a triple A, double A, single A, international team. Four teams at minimum. If you got scouts, we're talking about it's 25 players on the roster, right? Or was it? Yeah, it's got, but I think about right. 26. 26. 26 on the roster. Then you got a 40 man roster. Correct. 40 man. So, okay. So, with two, three, four times, that's 160 players in your organization. If you got a scout that's worth any salt, he'll be able to pull something out of every division that can help you on the major league level. And if you can't, then you end up like the rest of them fools paying a hundred something million dollars and still not win the championship. Because the reality is you have teams that don't spend the money and win the championship. So, you know, the fact that you have the Red Sox and, and, the, and the Dodgers and the Yankees winning, that's why we all, the whole country for a time until they found out about the garbage cans, Remember, the whole country was with the Astros because they had a low payroll, they had four good pitchers and hitters you didn't know, and a real short guy that hits home runs. Mm -hmm. That's what it was mm -hmm. when they got us the first time. And they, mm -hmm. they, they, their salaries now, because they had to re-up on dudes' contracts, but when they first came through and doing it, they was damn near like the ace. You didn't know any of those guys, and you didn't know what they were getting paid. Right. And the, the people get behind that, man. Like Daryl says, this is something intrinsic, man, that people say, yo, dog, even though it's, they, they're all millionaires. Mm -hmm. But you're like, yo, they're not spending a hundred million dollars. You know? Because no. that's why we were the evil empire. Because we spent, you know, a hundred million dollars. Yeah, we ain't the only ones no more. There's a bunch of evil empires now. Look at, look at Chicago Cubs, not the White Sox. Cubs spend money every year and only won one time in the last 100 years. It's sitting at 128.1 mil. And when, they they got, see, and when they see things starting getting bad, fire sale. Well, yep. they, they got rid of everybody. They still paid 128. <laughs> fire sale. Yeah. Rizzo. So how much was it when Rizzo and those guys were there? Because mm -hmm. I'm guaranteeing you, the dude that took Rizzo's spot was riding a bus in double A last week. So let me let me let me point this out though. So this looks like the Cubs norm. They go for it, and if they can't achieve it, they'll start all over again. Yeah. Is that a good is that a good business practice though? Well, well it, it worked for the Marlins. And twice. 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 Yeah. Okay. It hasn't worked for Kansas City yet. Hasn't worked for uh the Cubs as of yet. They did it one time. Kansas City and the Cubs have done it once. Once so far. Or it's Seattle. Far. Or Seattle. But, but that as, far, as far as a fan base, and then we got to move on. As right. far as a fan base, it, does the fans care? Do, do you care? Because the, the team that we care about, they go for it every year. The New York Yankees go for it every year. And Let me tell you something. <laughs> Let me tell you something, man. I, I can't I can't speak for every fan, but I can speak for myself, dog. I'm gonna speak for myself. I don't care if you're blibbity blank 
payroll is at 44 million or 144 million or 344 million. All that we the fan, sorry, all that I the fan want to see is effort. That's all I care to see is effort. You could lose 10 in a row like the Orioles did, but guess what? How did you lose? Did you lose three to four? Did you lose in in, in extra innings with the stupid rules that they got with the guy on second base? I, you know what I'm saying? Did you did you try to bunt the man home and it went out of uh and, and went foul on, with two strikes? I mean, those those are the things that I the fan look at. You know what well, I'm saying? No but if you getting if you getting railroaded by twelve every point, night, D. every time out, come on, man. You, nah, I don't. Hey I'm, yo, but hold on, but Kev, go ahead. I'm talking about fans, like where we from, right? And Yankee fans, like Laker fans, like. Boston yep. fans, we good. want to win. Like uh, New England fans and uh, the the Patriots, Boston area, we want to win every time. We don't care. We we just want to win every time because we done been we been used to winning. So we shouldn't be shocked that the Yankees didn't sell at, at the trading deadline, right? No, we, we shouldn't be shocked. No, uh, but that's, that's our should they had I. I thought they right. should at the trade. Yeah. I was wrong. I was wrong. Yeah, we were. Say it. Yeah, we I got said it. they should sell but because they, I don't believe that they have a team strong enough to get to the finish. Because my thing is this, and it uh, goes to James E. Warren's man in the other sport. This is not about just playing, man. This is about winning. And I don't know if that team is good enough to get to the goal. Now, Correct. they have been hitting the ball. They've been the playing, level. right. They've been hitting the level off the ball. They had two or three pitchers that we did not expect to do anything. Mm-hmm. Young kids come up and pitch really well. But. But is it sustainable? Seven game series. We still. You, the, the dudes is locking in on you now. And they know what Stanton's going to swing at. And that's why I'm not. They know I'm not, what, 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 what we said earlier in the year. Over the time, we're not we're not wrong yet. Again, the go the main objective is to win. New York Yankee fans want to win. God bless George Steinbrenner, wherever he that man, all he wanted to do was win. No doubt. Multiple championships and keep winning. He he didn't care. And he spent the money. So oh, yeah, the, yeah. the 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 okay, they won eleven straight, nine straight, whatever the case is, the job is not done yet. But am I feeling? I, I feeling early in the year. Yes, I thought, and you was, we thought. I was there. I was there. I was hey, there. I think they should sell because they was not playing how we are normally. I mean, they were horrible. They were. They was, horrible. They was not playing. They smoking. Horrible. Horrible. Oh, man. Absolutely. But we you, already you, said that it's a it's a marathon. I said that from from jump. It's a two marathon. Two left handed bats will will change some things for you. But let's yeah, see, man. is it going to change you all the way through the play? We'll if see. they make the playoffs, if they make it, and is it sustainable throughout? Right, with, um, Rizzo and um, what's the other guy's name? Huh? Gallo, Big Gallo. Joey Gallo. Oh, Gallo. he made a heck of a catch the other night in Atlanta, man. That was a really good catch out there in the left field. But go ahead. You know, yeah. Like I said, those are my mom yeah. dudes because both of those dudes are named after mobsters that got killed in New York, but. <laughs> So that <laughs> it's the truth, but but the reality is this, man. For this is like real baseball. I'm, we gonna lose some people because Eric just said it. Two left-handed bats placed in the right place in the order will protect two right-handed bats after them. Yes, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Good point. One lefty protects two righties. So the point remains: is good move, great move. I didn't know that. Come on, it was a little luck involved because we're like, hold on, they're gonna look Rizzo from from the Cubs. Cubs? Yeah, they're gonna, what? <laughs> Gallo was the only thing smoking in Texas, point blank. Period. Right, you don't what... expect them to let go of those guys. No, well, they, they, well the Cubs got rid of Baez. They got Baez. everybody. Yeah, they don't. They, they, the catch, they kept this to catch him. Um, yeah, yeah homeboy. Um. Oh God! I hate the Dodgers got the Dodgers didn't get Rizzo. They got the other one. Um, what is his name? No, we got Rizzo. No, they got, got uh, Rizzo. The yeah, they got Rizzo. They got and, the and Chris Bryant went to the Giants. Right, yes. Chris, Chris Bryant went to the Giants. Right, oh, dog. Stop real quick. My bad. That dude is serious, yeah. especially with that team. Yeah, man, oh. that, that's in, in, the, in that stadium. Mm. Yeah. 
they they up on the uh, on the Mets right now, two nothing. But yeah, um, and the Mets got enough. They probably the owner called out the team. He says, "Yo, what y'all doing?" He called them so, out. That's real accountability. So, uh, that's when you that's when you got somebody holding people foot to the fire. But, and I think the manager for the Mets it won't be there next year. And I'm not trying to advocate for nobody's what's them call it, but the Mets have absolutely done a. They swoon. They are currently seven games behind the Braves now in the standings. Let me ask you a question, though. Go ahead. Calling out the team, in reality, is is that enough? Or is it something where we're saying, yo, man, maybe, and this is going back to what you're saying, D, maybe we need to pull some of this money back from your contracts. Because you're not playing like you're worth it. Right? So that that goes to the football thing. Don't and it, and it fat, also bro. goes to it also goes to like how we talk about that other guy in that other sport. Yo, man, you went to the grocery store. You knew what you wanted. Okay, you had your little grocery list. Shout out! You to went to the counter. You picked it up. You brought it to the to the to the cashier, and you checked out. Okay. Ooh. My thing was this: we talk about it all the time. I ain't got nothing against Francisco Lindor, but my thing is look at the lineup that he came from versus where he's at now. You know what? Polar Bear wasn't wasn't playing then when 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 he when he got there. He was protected in Cleveland. I'm gonna say it. I know it's just one year. I know it's early. But when we see stuff like that, he looks like he was protected in that lineup with Cleveland. I think he was. Oh, absolutely, he was. And now he came here. He's kind of exposed. That's why he has been struggling the whole time. And we got to end it on this note. D D Dub, you have anything on this? And then we gotta we gotta go to football. Yo, man, I, I like my man Lindor. Man, give him a chance, bro. Give him a chance. <laughs> Yeah, I like him too, but I'm just saying. That, Give my man you know, a we, I'm, I'm in the moment. I'm in the moment. He might have been right protected. Might, you, yeah, I, I, I can see where you're coming from. I, you know, I, I, I can see that. Because real quick, real quick, I yeah. thought the same thing about your man, um, your, your best friend out in uh, Philly. I thought the same thing. Oh, you was protected in Washington, homeboy. Bryce, you, you oh, got yeah. yeah, but he he he's tearing the ball off the cover now too. I did Bryce Harper. You you proving me wrong, dog. Because I, 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 I been, Bryce, uh, Bryce you, Harper. You 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 you've been doing your thing recently. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like I said, man, you know, Finally. <laughs> ba- uh, baseball is hard to really sometimes to judge these guys because, again, it's it's, it's such a long season. And, you know, it, it takes them a minute, for, you know, some longer than others. But, you know, I, f- I feel what you're saying, though, about my man. Well, this has been a very spirited um, segment here with baseball, man. Like I say, yo, we talk all sports, man, and we talk about it in depth, you know, not just on the surface. Uh, we really dig baseball and – Hopefully, y'all guys that tune in, gals and ladies, you know, y'all tune in. Y'all feel us on this, and um, this is what we do. But, hey, Robert. Go ahead. I'm That's sorry. I, I meant airplane. to say this earlier. I meant to say this earlier. What we just said about baseball, you're not going to find that anywhere else. I'm saying it. Sports Chasers podcast. Hello, give it Sports to you Chasers. all day. Well, all hour. <laughs> uh, unless it's Once on the we- network. That's the only catch I get at, too. True. Yeah. Moving, moving right along before, before you know, Dorian's been good. Dorian's been good. Got to tell my mama that Dorian's been good. Um, yeah, moving right along. The oh, National man. Football League. Uh, football's in, um, we got the third week of um, preseason coming up here, and the National Football League is moving right along. They have some couple COVID things going on, but we're going to keep it on the field for right now. And what we're going to talk about um, currently is – you know, some of the quarterback battles, um, you know, through the years, you know, when teams draft a quarterback, I would say back when I was coming up along, usually the person, the quarterback being drafted, he might sit for a year or two. Doesn't start right away. But there's been a different philosophy where the quarterback now, for whatever reason, they must start today. And well, it's not for whatever reason. It's for the money. But, you know, we changed that with the rookie pay scale and all that thing. So we're going to just concentrate real quick. Well, not real quick. We're going to talk about this. Um, some of the quarterback um, battles that's going on. And we'll go out to San Francisco, out there to DA's team. Jimmy Garoppolo and Trey Lance, they're battling for a, quarter, a quarterback no, position. No, no, no. <laughs> wait a minute, DA. Wait a minute, DA. No, so, they're not. <laughs> wait, it's, so, it's, wait, wait, <laughs> wait, DA. So me and D-Dub was talking on the phone earlier today, and 
D Dub said, "Yo, they are uh, disrespected Jimmy Garoppolo." What D Dub? Go ahead, get in this. Kev, Kev, this has been going on for quite some time with this whole Jimmy Jimmy G. You know, from that other network, you know, that four letter network over there, man. They they disrespect the man. The man was close to winning a, a dag on Super Bowl. I mean, let's let's just be clear. Oh. So with that with that being said, you you bring in a rookie, Lance Trey Lance. Is that that's his name, right? Trey, yeah. Trey Lance. Mm-hmm. I've seen him, and he's a pretty, he's a pretty decent quarterback. He's a young, he's still a young kid. What is the? My thing is, am I'm if I'm a he needs uh, to start. No, he does not need to start. If I'm a if I'm a vet on that team, I'm looking at this guy. And I'm like, okay, he's a, he's going to be good, but we already got a quarterback that took us to the Super Bowl, and last year everybody got hurt. So now we bring back everybody, and What's the problem? Why can't we? We should be able to get back with other pieces and get back to where we where we was. So I don't understand this disrespect of uh, Jimmy G. And I'm gonna let Da uh, finish it up because that's his that's his people down there. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think I honestly <laughs> believe, serious real talk, that this is all the imagination of some producer at these stations. He's they have whispering his ear. Yeah. We need to put Trey Lance in there. <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. DA, please say yeah. Trey Lance. He, yeah, he but has to. I mean, we we are hearing all of a sudden we are hearing that um, the rookies <laughs> like, the, hearing the rookies, you you are hearing say you're here. hearing the rookies need to play. So in one half hour segment, you'll hear that oh no, no Trey Lance should not da, 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 because Jimmy G is this, and then the same guy. Two minutes later, we'll say, "Oh yeah, well, yeah." Justin Fields has to play. Mm. We'll get to I'm that. Look, I'm looking at the syllabus, and I'm like, "But you just said mm-hmm. let the rookie sit." And it's not that long ago, Kev, because the quote unquote best QB in the league, Patrick Mahomes, sat. For he a year. sat, and he said he would not be the quarterback he is today if he did not have the opportunity to sit behind Alex Smith. I remember they were a winning team that year. Mm-hmm. Don't get it twisted. Mm-hmm. I remember the first game of that season, they played the Patriots and blew the doors off of them. Alex Smith and the Kansas City Chiefs blew the doors off the Patriots yep. the first game. Like they scored 40 something points on them. All right. So that 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 was crazy. But Patrick Mahomes had a clipboard and was learning. There's no reason for these kids to play. Unless you don't have another quarterback there, so I give Trevor Lawrence a shot to play. They got nothing else. They don't have any, nothing. That makes any, sense. Any other team that's close or believes they are a playoff team, you're doing a disservice to your team by putting a rookie out there, right? Oh. And, and sometimes, Kevin, I'm sorry, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go on this note. Yep. Because this was what really upset me, and I'm not sure what the hell Cameron Newton did to the rest of this planet. Yes, that but he's. I'm not. I'm not sure why every day they're trying to. Hey, listen, guys. Mac Jones. Mac Jones. Listen, Joe. Mac Jones got all the first series reps this week. Well, you know what? Cam Newton was not playing. Somebody had to get the first team reps. That doesn't mean he's good. Exactly. And let's let's look and see that. Hey, who are you playing against in these games? Vanilla defenses, nobody's going man to man. They're all playing zone. They're playing shells. Half of the, the, the starters on defense don't even play. So, yeah, you're going to have some. So, if you're not dominating that, then, dude, you ain't nice. You say, oh, you know, he had a good game. He had a 10 for 18, one interception, one fumble. You were doing it against the third string guys, and you couldn't get it right? Stop playing. Yeah. Uh-huh. I gotta hold on, Kev. The disrespect of Cameron Newton is real out here. I don't know why. I have no idea. Why? And he's the the starter. Let you know that because Belichick said he loves him and he's gonna start. He's an MVP of this league. Yeah. Once an MVP of this league. I'm not even going to. All of a sudden, you telling me Mac Jones from Alabama, rookie. Never played in the league. Alabama. Al- let's oh, say that again. Al- Alabama. Alabama. Never is had the that. guy. 
had the best team. Everybody the best he threw receivers. the ball to. Yeah, everybody that the he threw the ball lineman. to was open by 10 yards. Yeah, oh, he man. did he look good the other night? Yeah, he looked good. He threw a couple passes and he looked good. <laughs> but you're not telling me that he's better and you have a better chance to win with Mac Jones than with Cameron Newton. I'm sorry. You can say whatever you want to say about Cam Newton. And we there's a quite some things to say about him. But it's nothing it's all off field related. But Cam Newton is that dude. So stop playing. People oh, stop playing. Let me let me, mm-hmm. let me say let me say something. Let me well not say something. Let me just ask. Let me pose a question to Eric. Um, Eric, the angry one, usually the reason why he gets angry because of things about what I'm about to say. So let's go on the flip note, right? So you start these quarterbacks, right? You put them in these dubious, impossible situations. He's about to black the screen now. I gotta, I gotta wheel him in before he does. And <laughs> and, and he's gone. Yeah, he, he went all the way. Yeah, he, he's out. <laughs> he went all, all the way out. Yeah, he's still out. Oh, man. But go ahead, Cam. I'm going to finish it up for him. Go ahead. So on a flip note, right, they put, like, quarterbacks in these impossible situations. Like, look at my man Ryan Tannehill. And I I lived it. With this guy we're, we're living, um, working down here with, with, with Adam Gase, right? Yeah. Eric's back. Eric just joined us back. He blacked us. Hey, look, you said Adam yeah, he- Gase. He might be out of here. He might again. be out again, yo. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, I had to. I, I didn't want to cuss, so I had to. I had to, you know, move side real quick. Go ahead, Kev. Go ahead, finish. Go ahead. No, no. I my question, and I know I'm, I'm making a statement, but what is wrong with some of this NFL personnel? Like you said, and and, and we'll go back to even what you said about Jason um, Campbell. Jason Campbell, you put these quarterbacks in in terrible situations. What's the guy that just left the Jets? Um. Sam, Sam Donald. Yeah. If you don't put a quarterback up to succeed, Eric, go ahead, take it away. You know what I'm trying to say. Go ahead. So basically, ladies and gentlemen, what the great moderator is trying to say is that you get these guys, you draft them. I'm going to use the great Robert Griffin III as an example. That's another one. Go ahead. Okay. This man set records at Baylor. He came back from, I believe, two ACLs, bust his tail to get to where he was at. And between, I've, I, this is, I, I, I have Robert on my Twitter, but um, yeah, I think he banned me. Wasn't he the rookie of the year? Rookie of the year. Be Andrew Luck. Rookie of the year. Yeah. Um, people forget that at the height, of that first year in Washington. Um, the Washington then football team, I'm not going to say that name on the air, but the Redskins were um, up on the great Seattle Seahawks in that game before. Yes. Robert got, yes. Um, I, the coach name escapes me. I'm looking dead at him. Um, what was the coach name? Washington. Um, yeah. Oh, your man. Um, God, I can't think of his name. Shannon. Anyway, Shannon. Yeah, old man Shannon. Yeah, old man. Yeah, old, old man. man Shannon. Shannon. Yeah. He mm-hmm. did not want Robert Griffin in the first place. He wanted Kurt, your brother, your sister, your uncle, your 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 your, your auntie, cousins. That's who he wanted. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, because that was his typical quarterback. So you put Robert out there. You got him doing all these crazy. You know, you're running him to death. You got him catching passes. I mean, all this stuff is unnecessary when the man can sit in the pocket and deliver the ball. He was going to be, and the players knew it because the players commented on it, he was going to be that prototypical quarterback that everybody wanted to wanted to have, okay? He was going to be the run, in front of him. Yeah, the run, the run, the, the run pass option. Um, you, you, you had, you had a cam, but cam doesn't have the touch that Robert had. Okay. So getting back to what Kevin is saying is that you get these guys, you draft them and you have this false sense of a football idea of what your team is going to be. 
and then you, the, the the coaches get fired. You bring in somebody else. You bring in another coordinator. You bring in another uh, 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 quarterbacks coach. You bring this guy. You bring that guy. And to Jason Campbell's point, this man was under um, Washington for three and a half years. Yes, he had a total. It was five years. Yeah, no, he had five um, yeah. offensive coordinators. He had a total of five offensive coordinators and two head coaches. Jason Campbell didn't know that his name was Jason by the mm. time he got out of there. How your organization that you work at would be if leadership changed five times within three years. Think about just, it. I'm going to bring up another think name. Think about it. I'm going to bring up another name before people saw Harper. Oh, you talk about the black quarterback. Okay, I'll bring up another quarterback because we don't. I don't care that black or white ain't got I say not, this, this, not this one right here. Not even Tannehill. Not even Tannehill. Well, I, yeah, he's a good one too. Josh Rosen, remember him? Remember mm. him, ladies and gentlemen? Just a few mm. years ago, he was drafted what fourth, fifth overall? He's yeah, a he's pick for the Niners, to the man. Arizona Cardinals. Yes. Guess what? When they fired their coach, who was black, um, <laughs> they got him up out of there, sent him to Miami. Okay. He sat, he he uh played uh musical chairs at quarterback with with uh old man um Chris Joe. Oh, yes, uh, thank you. Fitz Magic. Fitz Magic, yeah. And then he went to, I believe he went to Tampa or he went somewhere else. And yeah. now, thankfully, he's with the Atlanta Falcons. I don't know how long he's going to be there, but he has another quarterback that hopefully he can learn from. But here's the thing, people. When you draft guys, please have some kind of idea of what you are drafting and how you're going to use them. Remember Nambi Asamoa? Remember that great cornerback that was playing with the with the with the oh, LA Raiders, season. Oakland Raiders, or whoever? Raiders before he went to the Eagles. Yeah. yeah, he went to the Eagles, and I blame him for this too. Cause you signed a contract. Um, they play zone. Yeah, you don't play zone, dog. He's a press man guy. Yeah. He's big. So how was that? Yeah. How 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 did you think that you was gonna be in the Pro Bowl when you don't play in the system? Remember Albert Hainsworth? Remember mm -hmm. that guy? Remember when he was dominated in Tennessee? Signed a contract with Washington. I blame both of them too, because you know you don't play that gap. That's not yeah. how you play, sir. You shouldn't have even came here. Now, allegedly, I was told, my sources told me that Washington told him that they was going to change the defense. And that yeah, was they, they come to Washington. They were. Hearing, Eric, are you hearing? <laughs> oh, no, they, I'm said hearing. That. So, they said that. They yeah. said that. So uh, I'm joking. Man. No, they they absolutely they said that. They said they was going to change the defense well, and they didn't. I mean, to be honest, yeah. man, this ha hey. this happens to quarterbacks all all the time. I mean, I'm just going through a list of Tim Couch, well, they're professional, uh, and they should Shane be Matthews. Uh, uh, look, look, listen, yeah, my man from the Raiders, his brother, I, I he David Carr, NFL, yeah, David Carr, right? That's mm -hmm. the brother, is David, right? The, yeah, David, yeah, he was the first one. Yeah, right. David so, was the uh, first. I am, I am surprised that that brother can even speak correctly on the NFL channel. Mm -hmm. Because he got murdered, and they Th that's murdered. he was getting killed in Houston, dog. Like eight sacks a game killed. Tim Couch is another one. Joey Harrington, remember yeah, him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the list. The, you should see this list. Uh, Guys gotta... that came out from college, it was sending college on fire, broke records, and they go to the wrong team, wrong team draft them. Don't know what to do with them, or don't have pieces. To begin with, and then well, you know the quarterback gets hurt up or whatever, or gets that's, killed. That's the weird dichotomy of it all. So a great player in college is going to go to a bad NFL team because mm -hmm. bad teams are at the top. Bad teams. Unless you have a situation where you have like trades or like with the Niners this year because of injury. But reality here, the reality is, listen. You know, a, a great player, number one or two coming out, you're going to play for a bad team. And when we say bad team, we just don't mean bad team on the field. We mean right. bad team ownership, bad team GMs, bad teams coaching, bad team players. People forget about Rick Myra. I remember this cat. Notre Dame. He played with us for a while. Rick played with us for a little while. Got drafted in 93 by Seattle, the Seahawks. And the Seahawks was terrible. They was trying to find a uh, a back to be um, quarterback for Dan McGuire. Rick time. Meyer was all right, uh, and I hate Notre Dame. Rick Meyer was good there, so he mm -hmm. was he was serious, man. Oh, let me ask you this, guys, as we as we move along on yeah. this talk. Um, 
people scolded two weeks ago. You know, Andy Dalton said it's his time. Is it his time or is it yes. just your time? Yes. Go ahead, DA. It's his Talk time. About Chicago Bears um, quarterback thing. It, it, it's his time. You do not, with a capital, do not want a rookie to start the season against Aaron Donald. Period. End of story. He's going to get murdered. Murdered. Here's, here's Without the thing. him. Here's, here's, not to cut you off, DA, but here's, here's the twist, too, that I don't think people realize, right? So this new dynamic. Let's let's look at the um the Philadelphia Eagles and the and the and the uh, St. Louis, L.A., San Jose, wherever they play at um, Rams, right? So you had rookie quarterbacks and you played them, right? And you tried to get the most success out of the first year on their rookie contract. So you overload the teams and all this other stuff. Good point. That man. is the that is it's a copycat league. Mm-hmm. So this is what they're trying to do. They're not bringing in no defensive coordinators nowhere to be found. They're bringing all these offensive gurus so they can draft these quarterbacks fresh out of college, and they have a four-year window, window. to get it done. Correct. They go, they, 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 go uh, they, they, they trade, but mostly free agency. They do heavy spending, and they see what they what, how the chips may fall. That, well, that, that is that, what's wrong with the NFL right now. Well, that that's started, why they're not sitting anybody. I'm that sorry. Started with, that started with um, – me and Kev used to talk about this before we had the podcast, man. We'd be on the phone and we said that's the Seattle thing. Because when yes. Russell Wilson, uh, when yeah, he came yeah, I up, forgot about that's right. Remember, they that's, had the yes. dude that they paid all the money to. Mm-hmm. He came from Green Bay. I forgot his name. Oh, yes. Uh, Flynn. 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 Yes, oh, Flynn. Yeah, they just paid him all that money. I they remember. paid him all that money. And then all of and, a sudden, and Russell and went to, to the camp. Raiders. Russell went to camp and he bust that. Right, mm-hmm. gave him the job. Then they realized, well, shoot, we got Russell and Marshawn Lynch is playing well, O line pretty good. So you know what they did? The next year, they spent a ton of money on defense, and by year three, they were in the Super Bowl. Everybody said, "Oh," and we thought. Me and Kevin talked about. It. We thought this made sense, if because if you're paying the quarterback. And this Dallas thing this year is really, really interesting. interesting to me because you gave Dak the money and you got some real good players, but you also have a lot of players that are coming up on their deals after this season that they're not going to be able to keep because of that contract. And I'm not saying that Dak wasn't worth the money. I'm not, I don't even care. It's just a matter of, okay, if you go to the supermarket, <laughs> you spend you spend all your money on them steaks, and the rest of the week you eating cat food. Something wrong, mm-hmm. especially when you know you got to go to work next week and you got to put gas in the car. Yeah, so <clears throat> we'll see what happens. Because I think Dak is great. I don't think he's good. I think he's a great quarterback. Um, there's nothing Dak does that I don't like. Um, but again. You want to use that leverage if you can to uh, get the rest of your team right. So, like the Niners are a little different because Jimmy G, they gave him big money up front, a lot of guaranteed money in the first two or three years. They don't actually owe him any money now. This is why they can let him go because they're just paying him for this year, you know, and it's a year to year thing with him. But again, Daniel Jones, this is why I say, yo, dog, they're going to ride this Daniel Jones thing out because they're not paying him any money. And while they can get other players, they're going to ride this Daniel Jones thing out and try to see what they can make of it with the Giants. Right. They're not paying him any money. And this dynamic well, changed. This dynamic changed with, the, I, I call it the Sam Bradford rule, when he was the last to get the paper, to get all the paper. Remember, they, and then they said, oh, we got, we got to do something. Yeah, the money, all the money, so they 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 implemented the rookie um um rookie wage um yeah wage but you know you think you got to think about it, fellas, the vets they were right because the vets was like okay, you, you you're gonna you're not gonna pay a doctor that just started as much as a <laughs> doctor that's been doing surgeries for years, so why you bring this new kid in to get this money and he's never played. Proven. He has not played. Facts. 
But the NFL is, you know, there's some things they're a little funny about. Let me let me run down some other things here. Um, in D- in Denver, Drew Lock versus Teddy Bridgewater. Who should be starting, guys? Oh, uh, Teddy well, won the day. Teddy's been named. Actually, oh, yeah. they named him today. Yeah. Hey, guys, did, did not get that on the wire. Yeah, uh, Indianapolis coach Sam Ellinger versus Jacob Eason. Um, I like Jacob Eason. Okay, I like him from Georgia. He's a good quarterback, but you know. The thing they they are also in a situation where they have to deal with this other dude with kick gloves. Because to me, dude quit on his oh, team. Yeah. I really don't have much respect for him. But oh, dude, you know, dude, he's hurt, you know. <laughs> ah man, listen. Last year that dude said, I didn't come here to be second string. I came here to play. And Philadelphia was like, did. well, dude, yeah. if, if you would throw it to guys with the same jersey on, maybe we can do something. Yeah. Trevor Lawrence, Gardner Minshew. Who should be starting? Oh, you, I, I'm Trevor Lawrence. I would Lawrence. let Gardner, I would, I would, they're going to do Trevor, but I would let Gardner Minshew start because. I, I would let Gardner Minshew start. You too. don't want, you don't want that dude to get killed. Nope. Now, three, no. three of their five offensive linemen starters didn't play the last game. Um, but I guess the two that were there, <laughs> yeah, you know, it would, wasn't that pop with those two dudes. Cause well, you I murdered. feel you, I feel you on that. I mean, if you're going to do it, I will I mean, let if you're going to let let the like if this is how it's been let the let the guy the older guy start and then let him gradually learn. let, him, let learn. him gradually if you feel like it needs to be a change made and you're not getting nothing then put the rookie in hey Gardner Gardner went you played good they won he, he won yeah I, I forgot year. yeah he did he what? he won yeah, games last year so I mean it's not like my he was a is, it was not he was a bum yeah, yeah, well, my thing is this we can't let the crowd. Yeah, we can't dictate, let the fans. We can't what it let is. idiots on TV. You right. Tell you yeah. what to do with your team. You are right. True. You got to stay the course, and that's what I like. Teams that I you know, listen. I hate Bill Belichick, but I love Bill Belichick because <laughs> he he stays the course, man. He don't care what you say. Mm-hmm. He's like an old married man. Wife cussing him out. Days he said, "All right, oh, yeah, baby, all right, all right." In Cincinnati. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, the only thing with the Jacksonville thing that I would say that I would just point out, um, I don't know for sure, but being that it's a new offense, um, you know, your man done came there with a whole new slew of uh, tricks and bells and whistles and whatnot. I would think that whoever, I mean, God and Minshew ain't no veteran. I mean, it was this his what second, third year in the league. So again, we're changing offensive coordinators and head coaches again, but uh, and yeah, it's it's, it's, it's another quarterback that got to deal with it. But um, For those that if, not if, if he's Alex not his eyes, <laughs> if he's God. not if he's not up to speed, um, or if, if if he's not even on the same level as what Trevor already has with that offense, then I think you got to go with whoever has the best knowledge. That, yeah, that's I, just me per se. See, yeah, I didn't watch it. I'm not an Urban Meyer guy. Um, we know. He, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> and I've been good about that. I didn't say nothing about it. But uh, there's a real big difference between pro and college football, and it's the hashes. And what happens in between the hashes. That's why certain defenses you can play in the pros you can't play in college because the hashes are closer together and one mm-hmm. and the hashes are outside in the NFL. So there are things that Gardner Minshew can do because he knows certain players on the defense are going to be in certain spots based on their disciplines. But who knows? Because I believe the arrogance of Urban Meyer is going to get that kid killed. Because right? well, we football, not. football yeah, is right. the only sport where that college stuff does not translate to the pros. We ask, Steve, ask Steve Spurrier. Well, they, he, I mean, he did do something right. He said, you know what, Tim Tebow, your time is up. <laughs> so he did something correct. Well, that was because the dude in the locker room was probably like, yo, yo yeah. hey, coach, let me talk to you for a minute. You know, this, <laughs> this isn't college where you can go, you know, in Ohio State. Hey, coach, how you doing? Hey, hey, hey you better be cool. You won't play. The dude's in the NFL. Like, yo, 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 money. Yeah. Let me holler at you for a minute, man. This is grown man. That dude right there. He got to go. Wait, he just prayed over us. Yo, 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 yo. He got to go. Because <laughs> these are grown men, and this is their lives. 
Yeah. He, just, he just held, you know. No, dude, 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 did you see that block? He he, he missed it. <laughs> or oh, that missed block, yeah. yeah. He, he should have been praying over he missed how the it. block correctly. Man can't yeah. fix that block. <laughs> yeah. He missed God, the God block. God can't help you with the block. Yeah. All right? Yeah. He missed the dude. That's God didn't can't have help no, you with the block. Didn't have no effort. And the same dude he missed block, double back, and got an assist on the tackle. So you tell not me. Even, and as, we're not even going to talk about route running because there is none. Ooh. As the young kids say, make that make sense. Please. Yeah, so so <laughs> what, what he did, coach did, that was one of his – because he had another thing when he had the, the strength coach that used the N-word. Right. And they, they had to fire him. And then he brought Tebow in. So he was trying to test that college coach juice in the NFL. And it was like, eh, try it again. This is my guy. I'm going to bring him in. Not at the expense of another player you ain't. Uh, that, that can't happen. But Because you make him a team chaplain. You want <laughs> Father Tebow? Man, we got to go on. Top. <laughs> father, hey, hey father. The, the NFL has they're doing. They're embarking on their third week of preseason. Uh, let, let, <laughs> let, let, us, let, let us pray, everyone. Uh, Kevin, Kevin, get it back on the wheels, dog. I'm let, back let, on, the, on the rails. I mean, keep on rocking the boat, man. We're, we're gonna go on to college football. Uh, let, let us let us pray. Oh, we're going to college football. <laughs> Hey, we're going to talk about college football and some of the takeaways from the new, quote unquote, the alliance that could shake up college football. So let me read this article just real brief, real brief. I'm going to be real brief from T from Pete Thamel of the of Yahoo Sports. He says this, if the ACC, Big Ten and Pac-12 could have generated revenue by buzzwords and the announcement of their new alliance, they would they would have been swimming laps in their new revenue streams. The best way to greet the announcement of the new alliance between the three leagues and 41 schools is with the understanding of their intent or skepticism until there are more tangible results. Um, so he basically, he, he says, he talks about there could be problems with the playoff. Um, and then you got SECs and ESPN's roles, how the alliance could impact the scheduling. How does the ACC benefit? What does independence like Notre Dame do? Uh, the biggest, and they talk about the Big 12. The biggest tangible takeaway from Tuesday, maybe the bad news for this, is for the Big 12. Uh, that leaves the eight remaining Big 12 schools on the outside looking in. While there was speculation for years that there there be six and four teams remaining in the four Super Leagues, but the reality is we're headed toward an era where four power conferences in 50 17s. So they talk about that. Um, the yes, DA, that is that. It's an arms race, Kev. That's all this is. Is the arms race to expand and so forth and so forth. Go ahead, D. 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 It's an arms race for the money, man. They and they trying to jockey position and they making this this these super super conferences. So now, how many? Yes, how many conferences are we looking at now? Anybody know off the? End? Yeah, it's about uh, the bag. Yes, yeah, about. The, I think it's four. It's gonna so be, be four. Four super conferences, and then they got to figure out how they're going to break this down into play playoff situations. So it's you know they they going to reconstruct, reconfigure all this whole thing. And again, it's all about the money, and I, I, that's ahead, it. D. That's all I got. Go ahead, D. I believe it's so much bigger than that right now because it's an arms rate, like D said. The reality is this, man. All right, if everybody right, if we're talking about all things being sort of equal. Right, all the big schools can pay kids. All of them can, whether they do or do not. I'm not going to get into ethics. Right, the reality is, it's still them teams from the south, busting everybody else's arses. So, California is a great state. I think they're going to have two of their teams on ESPN tomorrow. High school teams. Of those teams, right? You playing for uh, say it's made a deep, made made a day. And then there's a Don Bosco out there, right? Really both. Either one of those teams, the kids from those teams would rather go to Alabama than UCLA or USC. Period. Period. We'd rather go to Clemson than UCLA or USC. Period. The reality is the kids have spoken. They want to go where they went. They want to go not just where they went, 
where they're the bullies and they're dominant. Yeah, USC is going to be good, but they're never going to be Alabama. Notre Dame is going to be good. They're never going to be Clemson. And that's what this is. So for the game to be uh, 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 some parody, you got to have all the kids being spread out to different places. And we're not going to have a system where people can tell you where you can and can't go. They're going to have to fix it at the school side for them, you know, and you can't get but so many kids out of this state. Because everybody that goes to LSU is from Louisiana. If you are, if you are a five-star, four-star kid out of Louisiana, you're going to LSU. There is not even an argument. So with that said, and LSU and, and Louisiana doesn't even have the top football in high school in the country. Dog, I, I think right now you, you're better off just having the SEC do their thing. They play, get a champion. And then that champion plays the other champions. And it's, it's you know, it's going to be the SEC. So you know, are you proposing that they do that for for the continuous until, I mean, because the SEC is gobbling everybody up. I, I, I why have, I, I'm, I'm surprised they haven't gotten to the Pac-12 yet. But see, I'm not, I don't believe the SEC is gobbling cats up. I believe dudes want to go there because the Texas and Oklahoma thing was them wanting in. The SEC didn't ask for nothing. <laughs> when Texas A&M came over a few years ago, right. I remember the SEC was like, yo, we not, we didn't, they didn't want Texas A&M there. They don't need anyone. They'll tell you that. We don't need you. They already got two sides, the East and the West of the SEC. Yep. Already have it. They don't need you. Because I'm telling you what, Texas couldn't beat Georgia. Oklahoma couldn't beat Georgia. So that's on the eastern side of the bracket. And they couldn't beat Florida last year. And none of those teams were going to beat Alabama. And a bad LSU team might have gave them work. But Auburn would have beat them. So, dude, this is about getting your game up. You know, in the Pac-10, the games are not good. Back in the days, man, them kids from Cali that were rocking, they wanted to go to USC. They wanted to rock at UCLA. They were going to Cal. They was getting it in. Now you're from California and you crip walking on the football field, you trying to go to Alabama, son. That's what you're trying to do. Because there's money while you're there and there's money when you get out of there. Uh, let, me, let, me go to, let me go to Eric. Eric, what was your thoughts on this? Well, I mean, Daryl and and and, and Dorian done said basically everything I was going to say, man. Um, again, it's about money. It's always about money, and it's about you know for the SEC, it's about winning right now. Okay, that's all they want to do. They know that there's, I mean, outside of Clemson and maybe in Ohio State, there's no other team on the land that can beat them year in year out. That even is even considered beating them. Who? Uh, uh, Michigan, <laughs> please. So let's 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 be real, and and I and, and I feel like ACC. Yeah, it's and it's all it's all all of this all of these moves now. Like Da said, you know, the SEC didn't need anybody. Texas and 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 Oklahoma paid a ransom to get in because they wanted to escape where they was at. <laughs> Boy, and now every everything else is reactionary. All these other schools is, is uh, uh, other conferences is trying to figure out what, what they can do to stay relevant. It's all about players. relevancy and it's all about money. Get basically. the players. At the end of the day. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And that's how Deion Sanders is funding his war for black colleges is he's trying to get them players. Because if he does, the black colleges conference will be stronger than the Pac-10. Without the money. If Dion can get the kids to go to black colleges, it's going to be a problem because all the nice kids, and I'm not saying all of them, but a lot of the nice kids in college football are. So if, if these cats are not feeling comfortable on them campuses anymore, 
because there are Karens everywhere, or baby Karens, and this, that, and the third. Baby. You know what they'll be? They'll be at Bethune Cookman. They'll be True. in the Miac. And the other cats will start going because that's all it took. When I watched the 30 for 30 on, on Miami, that's all it took, man. Schnellenberger went to the hood. Went straight to the hood. Got Overton, this guy, this guy, and that guy that were real good. From Dade the County. Inter- yeah, from right out, got them. They went straight to Miami. Straight out Dade County. And then next thing you know, you had all the Blades brothers. You know, then you had uh, Michael Irvin. Then you had these other group of brothers. Dog. And next thing you know, Miami was nice. That's all it's gonna take, man. That's all it's gonna take. Let me read this. What he, what the, what the gentleman of this article. Let me get his name right, because we cite people of their work. We don't be stealing stuff. Mister Pete Dammel of Yahoo Sports. Um, he says here about scheduling. Don't expect this to play out based on fairness, as Oregon State isn't going to get the same exposure opportunity as. Ohio State and this alliance. What we have learned from the Oklahomas and Texans departures is the next ex- era of rights is going to favor the biggest individual brand as the strongest lead. So expect the best value matchup possible. And he's he saying what we just said. It's just not hard, man. Basically. Um, what do you let me ask you this? What what does this do for independence like Notre Dame still? Dorian is quiet. I need a second. Hey, I'm gonna say it for you. You gonna shit or get off the pot. That's what it's gonna happen. So it's Notre Dame. Yes, that's right. <laughs> you gonna yes. join the SEC? Notre Dame don't want no smoke. What they want is that NBC money they been getting. They do well, not for how many decades? Team. By what three or four decades? They've been on since the eight. What, uh, how long they've been on NBC? Since the seventies, eighties? Yeah, eighties, eighties. I believe maybe the nineties. Beginning of the nineties. No, I think it's, I think it's early eighties. Late eighties. Uh, late, 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 late Dawson. Mid to late eighties. Yeah, late Dawson was was remember yes. the first. But th- this is what I see, man. With that whole situation, real talk, man. They don't they don't want that smoke. They want to continue to get that money. I agree. And I it, and if and if Paul Horning. He got in trouble for this. I, I, for some reason, my memory goes back to things that no one else remembers. Um, but Paul Horning said, great uh, uh, Notre Dame dude, won championships with the Packers back in the days, got banned from the Hall of Fame for bet, for boating, boating, uh, betting. Sorry, He said straight up and down, Notre Dame will never be able to beat Alabama and the Floridas and the Miamis because in Notre Dame, kids got to go to class. Now you could say that he was being disrespectful in what he was saying, or you could say it was the truth. Paul Horning said they will never beat those schools because in Notre Dame, you have to go to at least some classes. Now you could take what you want from that. <laughs> but whenever I saw Notre Dame play one of those schools, they were getting smashed. I, be- I tend to believe him. Me too. Yeah. And I'm not saying that they all go to class all the time. No. I'm saying that there is a standard that you're going to go to some. Yes. And you could tell. So this this is that that's what but that's what this is about. I agree with you. Notre Dame don't want no smoke. Just and like they just Stanford. Want collect, they want to just, collect the paper. When's the last time Stanford won? Oh. Yeah. yeah. But uh, see, I would I I it's I been a decade or so, right? Yeah. It's funny. I, I think Stanford should play Notre Dame. Both educational powerhouse schools. And there was a time when Stanford was damn good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that's when, you know, my man that went to the Niners was paying kids. Is is let me pose this question. Um, is this good for college athletes? What's what's the, the bottom line? Is this good for college athletes? This whole if the kids are getting money because they're playing for a school in the big in one of them conferences, and that conference say, yo, listen, it's only right. We can afford to pay them. We'll pay them a thousand dollars a week. And I yeah. think the kids, I think the kids don't care. I think the kids, only thing they care about is the exposure and making it to the pros. Yeah. And if I you mean, could, if you could get them that, and that's, that's why, all they care about. That's why the television contracts are huge. Yeah, all that, and that was another thing I was going. That's what I was getting at with with, with the reactionary things. Uh, Big Ten, they're trying to scramble around, trying to merge so they can ask and gain more money from. ABC, NBC, all these other networks. 
Come on, man. And, this, and the crazy this, thing is that Texas and Oklahoma both got their own networks that get folded in this. Texas got its own network. And so does Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. So those things get rolled into the SEC network. Right. Wow. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's deep, that's, man. that's all it is for the kids, man. I mean, they just going to play and exposure. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say this, and then we're going to move on to boxing. Uh, me and DA talked about this, um, and we'll just do two, two minutes on this. This is absolutely going to be a game changer for college sports. Um, college football is going to have to probably do their own thing. It's going to be a, its own separate entity away from, quote, unquote, all the, all the other sports. And, to. and the only reason I say that because of how Eric and DA and the rest of you guys were saying, how there's so many moving parts and how football has just become a big entity. Now those will say, well, that's not fair to the person that's playing badminton. And no, sorry. Sorry, that's not why. sorry. It's part of the business. Sorry, but you, swa <laughs> you get swallowed up, dog. You ain't, you ain't bringing no money in playing backgammon, dog. I mean, come on, man. But this is why we say this. This is why it's going to, they're going to have to break off because the SEC, those dudes is tired to, to they're tired of explaining something that's self-evident. The field hockey team has six people out there watching and we have 100,000 in this stadium at 25 apiece. Why am I giving them anything? If you want it to be fair, I should only be giving it to the players on this field that brought in those 100,000 people. The fact that you're asking for welfare <laughs> from somebody else. No, That's it is welfare. What, yes, D, yes, thank you. You said it, yes. But they're it's a correct. part of the school, and what about- Hey, 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 hey. Yes, yes, you are. Hey, maybe maybe y'all need to play in shorter shorts. I don't know what you can do. <laughs> the reality is- Oh, no. That you have to do whatever you have to do to make your sport more palatable for people that spend money. Period. I've, I mean, I've, I've, been, I've been I've been to Columbia, South Carolina, and watched the Gamecocks play twice in that hundred seat thousand stadium. It's crazy, at twenty five a pop, as DA said. Dog, I went there with my man. He owns one of them train cars. I'm not gonna say his name <laughs> outside the stadium. We didn't even go in. We just sat on top of the train car with a big ass TV, and drank, and watched the game. So what I'm saying to you is. If the other sports are not generating any money, what makes you think that you deserve any of the money that my son who played college football was making? There was a lot to swallow, man. There was a lot going on with the college football, man. It should be a very interesting season. Like I said, they start, they go on the way to, I think this week. Um, one of the this week, baby, Alabama and uh, US, no, Miami. Yep, uh, uh, yep, that game is in Atlanta. Uh, yeah, shout out to all my Miami fans down here. Y'all about to get rolled, man. Smoke, smoke show, baby. But no, yo, Miami got a great quarterback, though. He's pretty good. He's got a good quarterback. Yeah, he's good. I, I, yeah. Well, we all know you need a good quarterback to beat Alabama, but you need something else to go along with it. Yeah, well, he's going to be running. He's a good runner, so he's going to be running. I suggest you drug their food before the game. Yeah. Uh, that works. Bama, Bama's coming to eat, so. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. why I said you, you drug the food, you know. Yeah. At least yeah. some of the fat linemen will be, you know. Oh, yeah. And that game in the Mercedes um, Georgia Dome, that, that's going to be sold out. So, again, you know. So why, would the, why does, so why, again, <laughs> uh -oh. does the field hockey team think they deserve some of that paper. Man, we got to move on to boxing, D.A. That is a rhetorical question. <laughs> d Do boxing real quick. Real uh, quick. Go ahead. Uh, your man, Manny Pacquiao, to suffer the defeat to Ste from uh, steroids. you guys. You, uh, Dennis, you guys. And he, uh, steroids. You, <laughs> you no, Manny, Manny, Manny claims that he just didn't have his legs, you know, with them, and he's, he's, well, most people thought he's gonna he's gonna retire after a defeat that he took he, on Saturday night. He's sixty-five but he's, years old. Yes, that um, he's 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 forty-two, I believe, and uh, and uh, he wants to come back. He says he he thinks that he could 
come back in January and get a rematch. You know, if uh, Paul Al Heyman, Al Heyman allows, so he he doesn't think it'd be uh, a problem. That uh, but he he got that work for you guys. You guys came in there and uh, uh, gave him that work. Um, he stepped in last minute, of course. So you know, I don't think Manny wasn't really prepared for him. It was it really was prepared for Errol Spence. So you know, uh, he looked he didn't look good. Uh, let's was just that say that. Away? That was a welterweight. That is right? welterweight, yes. So yeah. one forty seven at the yeah. at the height. Mm-hmm. So what what did Manny come in weighing about? Uh, good question. Uh, he's probably he looks small. He looked a lot smaller than dude. He looked he uh-huh. looked a lot smaller than him. So yeah, I have to get that. But uh, he was smaller. Uh, the dude used his jab and and used it effectively. And uh, and Manny was uh, again. I don't think he was really really prepared. Not making no excuses for him. Uh, I like Manny. I think I think Manny on a rematch will probably get this guy. You probably won't get him out of here. Manny gonna come in there two hundred pounds. No, nah, Manny. Yeah, you man, think so? Some steroids. Listen, well, he's man. also he he's also the senator at uh, uh, uh the Philippines, so he's that looking to become they, the president. They so they don't they don't check senators for steroids. <laughs> <laughs> That's why my yeah. man Money Mayweather wouldn't fight him. They thought he was BSing. Yeah, yeah. He said, yeah. "How do you go from super flyweight to welterweight? Super fly and all that weight and don't don't." Don't lose no power. Mayweather's like, man, listen, I ain't fighting that dude. He's <laughs> I'm not no that dude ain't gonna knock me out. So yeah. Yeah, but that's about it. Uh Kev. Anything else uh, the horizon? Look yeah, forward. I mean you got October with uh Tyson Fury and uh Wilder. Hopefully that will happen. Yeah, okay, because you know, other than that, you know. Hey, cause I throw one thing out there real quick, please. Go ahead. Yeah, we're about to get hey. out. Yeah, I know. Today, um, we're starting the Champions League in, in, in Europe. Football, real football, you know, soccer. Okay. Um, and the Champions League, is, and this is like something, again, that we don't do here uh, because we're just part of a country. And, and the Champions League takes the champions from every country that have won the most. So it's like you have Ireland, you have may have uh, – Brazil, you know, every country, European and South American country, if they won enough games over the course of the year, go into the UEFA Champions League. And this is by far the best soccer you'll see anywhere. Oh, and DA, to answer your question, Pacquiao came, Pacquiao came in at 146, and you guys came in at 147. Damn. Yeah. Somebody lying. Or yeah. maybe I was drunk. <laughs> that other dude right. looked big as hell. Yeah, he was he was tall. He was big. Yeah, he. Pacquiao looked like his son. Yeah, he could yeah. actually took him on the ride. Hey man, come on. Yeah. Hey, that's yeah. my son over there. Pacquiao. I, what do you I mean he's not big enough to get on the ride? He can't he get big inside. enough to get on this damn thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo, oh, Robin Griffin's on ESPN. Yeah, I'm just. Yeah, watching. yeah, yeah, yeah. He uh he signed a deal um yeah, I want to say about a month ago. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. What, He's what he's doing. He's going to be doing college, man. So shout out to doing college. Hey, yeah, yeah. Shout I out. actually think that your man Swagu and Booger, they really are messing up by not doing college. They were far better doing college football than pro football. But okay. that's just my opinion. I just really enjoyed them. I think it's, it's. I just think it's knowing your personnel, and sometimes we don't use them straight. Last but not least, uh, we don't talk about it on this show a lot. Uh oh, Eric is rolling his eye. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, okay. I thought you was rolling your eyes at me. Um, <laughs> uh, Not yet. Track and field event, hey, the 100 meter last weekend out in Oregon. Hey, all I'm going to say is real quick, hey, shout out to Elaine Thompson, man. She's the winner. She's the fastest woman. I don't know why we're talking about people in ninth place. D-Dub, real quick. Got nothing for you, brother. Uh, she, um, she won. Congratulations to the young lady. Yeah, and to everybody else, see y'all next time. That's it. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Moving yeah, right yeah. along. Ain't yeah, nothing yeah, else to talk about. Ain't nothing for this, man. I'm not getting into that foolishness what I seen the other night. Say, so say, no, nobody, hey, hey. nobody is talking about Devin Booker and and Chris Paul. Nope. Um, yeah, coming yeah. in second for the for the NBA title. Um, we're, we're definitely we're not, not going to talk about anybody that came in ninth hey. place. I, yes. My I, man, I Black Thought said, Black Thought said, listen here, it don't say nothing. Listen here, it don't say nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I, I ain't got go. nothing for you. Yeah. Do we talk about who came in ninth place at that spelling bee? Nope. No. Okay. All right. Nope. Man, uh, Michael was not with us today. <laughs> hey, hey, so I'm gonna take his job. Uh, where can we be found at? Hey, we can be found on every podcast platform that you can find. That's Apple, Deezer, uh, Spotify, Amazon, anything that got a podcast sign. Yo, we're there. We're on it. We're, we're there live and direct. Um, I said Spotify. Shout out to SoundCloud. SoundCloud has been holding us down for the since day one, man. So day shout one. Out SoundCloud. Out to, uh, SoundCloud, man. Um, what else? Also, we can also be found on YouTube. Um, we we broadcast every episode, every episode via YouTube. Um, YouTube. We will like, have subscribe. Like and subscribe. Hit that like button. Subscribe and share. And share. So we can get them followers up, man. I, I, we honestly believe, all followers believe we got something to say. We got some great things to say when it comes to sports. So holler at us. Um, within the next week or two, and I'm working on this, we're working on this, that we're going to be able to go live and do the show live, meaning that we'll have um, live interaction, whether it be Facebook Live or whether it be YouTube, um, going live on YouTube. One of those two vehicles, we'll be able to do that within the next week. And you'll see some different things going on with the podcast, you know, maybe a little different look, but we're going to be um, surprising you here in the next uh, week or two, man. We're excited about things that is coming to us, man. And, um, hey, you know, a lot of things getting ready to go on, man. With that said, we'll do our party shots, and I'll start with the angry one. What's your party shot, sir? As always, let me f- first start out with great show with my with my uh fellow podsmen let me make sure i say that right this time you know what i'm saying uh you know everybody just be safe out here regardless if you do or you don't i'm not going to get into all of that you know what i'm saying do just just make, yeah if you if you do or you don't man just uh you know protect yourself your family fellow man woman and child man you know what i'm saying and uh yeah that's all i got nothing heavy this week man great show and uh can't wait to see y'all next week Cool. DA? You know, uh, like my man E said, be careful. Uh, you know, don't fly Delta. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got nothing for that. That's a good one. Yo, that caught me way off guard. That's a good one. Man, I ain't a... That's the title right there. <laughs> don't fly. There's it, it a couple of titles tonight, man. I don't know, Kev. You got to, that's a good we one. Got to, we got to put them in a hat, kid. Yeah. Oh, man. He has been on fire, though, man. Yeah. Yeah. We've been picking his titles from some of the witty things that he has said, man. DA, yeah, it's good. It's, it's a good show tonight, man. Good show. Um, hey, tell, tell, hey, tell Mama Warren. I'm rocking for her. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So she, and she and the Bible. Righteousness. Yes. So to the church, to the church sisters, man. Shout yes. out to my mom, mom Vaness, man. Thank you. Mom. Yeah, I, I, I want to get her to listen. Hey, Auntie. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't have any part of shots. Um, Shaq says something. Pat, Shaq was on the podcast um, the other day, man, and he said some of his secrets to his life to life is just simply minding your business, man. Yo, mind your business, man. Sounds familiar, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think we've been saying that here on the Sports Chasers podcast for a very long time. Mind right. your business. Mind your business, man. Live a sucker free life. Shout out to Kid Capri. There you go. Um, you know, things of that nature, man, and things will absolutely work it out, man. But um, I don't have anything else besides those two items, man. Be safe, be careful while you're out there. Um, and believe in something. Believe in, believe in something. And I guess don't fly Delta if you don't want to fly Delta. Yeah. But on behalf of myself, <laughs> yo, this is a good one, man. <laughs> on behalf of myself, um, hey, I'm Kevin O. Warren, your host and moderator. On behalf of Dorian, D.A. Aubrey, and Daryl D.J. Warren, James the Angry One Warren, in the absence of Mike Mills. Primo! Yeah, yeah. This is the Sports Chasers Podcast, man. Yo, we out. we see y'all next week. Have a now take care. Bless
Y'all gotta get one of these, man. These are serious, man. Yeah, that's from the massage thing. Yeah, man, I got this joint here on 